I'm Mark Evans, currently playing Sam in Ghost the Musical at the Piccadilly Theatre, and you're watching Entertainment Focus. How are you today, Mark? I'm great today, thanks. I've had a week off work and I'm back and ready and rearing to go. Have you been doing anything nice in your week off? I have just been staying around London on my week off, really. Um, I had my best friend's wedding on the weekend, which was amazing, and uh, I'm not sure whether I've even recovered yet. Four days later, I'm still feeling the, the champagne in my brain. <laughs> I guess you have to be so strict, don't you, when you're doing shows every night. You can't. That's really... why I knew that my, you know, this wedding has been in the, you know, in the pipeline, been planned for eighteen months now. So I knew I wanted to be able to fully let my hair down. So I took a week off work for it. <laughs> but yeah, it's you know, it's difficult. I, my social life is, you know, I've never been a big party goer, but I've, you know, it's been stripped back to the bare minimum now. You know, most of the time I can barely talk outside of the show because I have to save my voice. Is that hard? It is hard. The show is incredible and it's, you know, it's the one thing. Last year I was working in Wicked playing Fierro and I said to my agent, you know, Ghost is the one show I desperately want to do. Um, so I, I'm just so grateful to be able to do it. So that kind of counterbalances the the pressure and the responsibility and all, all you know, kind of those moments where you kind of go, my God, this is hard. Um, but you know, you kind of you walk out on the stage, and you, you get this this show is incredible. You know, the script and the songs and everything. You, I just thank my lucky stars that I'm able to do it, really. So, um, although it's you know having to live your life like a silent athlete, <laughs> it's definitely worth it. So alongside the show, you've got your album coming out on Monday, which is the Journey Home, the Deluxe Edition. Tell us a bit about that. The Journey Home Deluxe Edition. I actually released the Journey Home, my debut album, last year, which was Welsh and English, bilingual, um, and it did really well, particularly in Wales. And um, and we kind of, the record label suggested that we release a full English version of it. Um, and it's great because it's very personal to me. Um, it's called The Journey Home because it's kind of almost semi-autobiographical in the way that I've picked the tracks to go on there. They're all on there for a reason. Which I thought was going to help me, you know, pick random songs, but it became very, very difficult to kind of stick to a theme. Um, but I'm really proud of it, and it's funny because I released the album last year. Now it's kind of everyone's the people who are hearing it for the first time, the English version. Are like, oh my god, this is great! Oh, I love this track! I love this track! And I'm like, yeah, it's just my album. But it's nice to kind of re-release it in a different form because it's kind of it's an opportunity for me to celebrate it again. And I'm, you know, it was a lot of hard work that went into that album and um, and into this one. And it's you know, I'm really really proud of it, and I'm I'm excited to see what people think of the new version of the songs. And is it hard work juggling doing a show like this and releasing an album at the same time? Um, it is difficult, kind of juggling. You know, it's it's not just the show and the album. There's there's other gigs and different. There's so many different things happening at the same time. But that's how I like my life. You know, when you perform a show eight shows a week for you know a year's contract, whatever. It's it's really hard. So and I get bored quite quickly. So I always like to have a variety. The difficult thing with, with Ghost because of the size of the role, it's difficult to do extra stuff outside of it because you have to maintain yourself vocally and physically. Um, but no, I mean it's really really great to be able to to do all the album promotion and things. You know, I've got a gig after the show tonight, and I'm doing an album signing at Dress Circle in London on on uh, Saturday morning, and then it's out on Monday, and then we're performing at West End Live next weekend and stuff. So there's lots of things coming out and lots of gigs in Wales and stuff as well which is it's, it's really cool so it sounds like essentially you're making up for your week off and you're cramming it all into it's so week. funny because my manager Rebecca and my agent Mark they're, they're really really great at kind of whenever that whenever I have time off from work they let me have time off they kind of they don't bombard me with emails and things but this morning it was literally like my alarm went off and it was like boom there we go straight back into it and the ball's rolling again but it's nice because I feel refreshed having had a week off and I'm ready for it now so let's talk a bit about your voice. Um, I think the first time that I heard of you was on the Eurovision, Your Country Needs You. That feels like um, ages ago now, the Eurovision. How did you get into singing? Where did that come from, really? I, um, I started singing when I was 10. I was at um, my primary school in North Wales, and um, we had a new music teacher come in, and she kind of noticed that I could sing a bit uh, when we were working on stuff for the choir. Um, and then she gave me a little solo, and I think the first time I performed in public was dressed as a snowman singing walking in the air in Welsh in the local supermarket um, and then they all just went from there <laughs> no, um, it's and then from there I just started you know acting and, and dancing as well and I never knew that I could do it professionally as a performer you know because I was a farmer's son from the hills of North Wales and you know didn't know really anything how to do it you know I remember going to watch West Side Story and Fame um, at the North Wales Theatre in Clendidna 
and thinking it was like watching Michael Jackson was for most people. You know, it was like watching superstars, thinking how the hell have they gotten to do that? And then you know, I went to do summer school when I was fifteen in at Lane Theatre Arts, where I eventually ended up training, and it just kind of all fell into place. I've been very, very fortunate. I think my sort of my approach to life is like what will be will be, and I've been really lucky that everything has kind of happened in the right way, in the right you know, in the right at the right time, and I've been able to do the jobs that I've wanted to do. So, yeah, thank my lucky stars. And you've got a very powerful voice. What things do you do to protect that to make sure it's always um, at its best? I think my voice is powerful and it's strong because when I was a teenager, I literally would not shut up. I was always singing. I couldn't, I mean, I'd sit down, my, my dad was a massive fan of EastEnders, um, and I'd sit down to watch that, and I couldn't even sort of like last a whole episode without going into our second lounge, our the posh lounge. And, um, and you know, using the, the nozzle end of the hoover and using that as my microphone and like belting things out and just always singing. And I think I've had a strong voice since then. And then when I decided, my first couple of jobs were kind of more chorus work. And when I decided that I wanted more responsibility, I really worked hard and had singing lessons and, you know, kind of wanted to be the best I could possibly be. Um, and I think it was around, just before doing the Eurovision programme, I played Troy Bolton in High School Musical. And from that moment, I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and I wanted to be playing, you know, lead roles and whatever. Um, and yeah, I kind of, it's funny because a lot of people have tips and tricks about how to maintain themselves vocally with medicines and all that sort of stuff. I mean, the only thing that really works for me is loads of water and loads of sleep. I mean, you know, I have to get try and get at least eight hours sleep a night, um, and yeah, and rest. If you're feeling tired, just don't shut up. <laughs> So going back to the album, have you got a favourite track on there? Oh, everyone always asks me what my favourite track of the album is. Um, I've got different... I like different ones for different reasons. I think um, my favourite to sing is probably... maybe Until Then, which was written for the album for me um, by Scott Allen, because it's just really, really stripped back and it's nice to do something that's kind of almost... Eva Cassidy, that was the kind of vibe that I wanted him to go for when he was writing it. Um, and it's the kind of thing that I picked myself sitting with my guitar around the campfire, just kind of <laughs> singing. And it's nice to do that because it's different, to, especially at the moment with Ghost, it's all, I had a life and all massive stuff. And, and so that's nice. But I think the most popular one, there's two tracks on the album that are most popular with the public. Um, and I think that's The Journey Home, the title track, um, because I think everyone can relate to that. You know, that everyone's been either they've moved away from home or they've got relatives that live far away. And it's all about, you know, the distance and how, you know, the first lyric is the journey home is never too long. It doesn't matter, you know, if you have to travel all around the world, it's when you get back to the ones that you love, that's the most important thing. And I think everyone can relate to that. And then there's also a duet with my friend Ashley Gray on there, which was written by Michael Bruce called Alive. And I said to him, I want something upbeat, fun, that really kind of celebrates good friendships and relationships in life. And that certainly is upbeat and fun. I mean, we've tried singing it live and it is almost impossible to breathe. <laughs> but yeah, I'd say those are the top three. But I, I like them, as I said, you know, they're not just a random few songs that I've whacked on a CD. They're all on there for a reason, so they're all you know, very special to me. And you mentioned before you've got a show after the show. Um, are you going to be going on a, a tour? Are you going to have time to do that? Or? I don't know. Well, one of the, before I knew that I was doing Ghost, one of the um, ideas that we were joking about was possibly doing a bit of a schools tour to kind of, you know, because I do a lot of work promoting youth theatre as well. I run a summer school up in North Wales. Um, and so we were going to kind of combine, we were going to combine it f for promoting my album and kind of go and do a few like songs or whatever and then maybe chat about what it's like as a, as a working actor in the West End and things to kind of promote youth theatre. So I don't know whether that's going to be an option in the future if I have time to do it. Um, but yeah, there's lots and lots of gigs coming up. I don't think I'll ever have time to literally go, OK, I'm going to do take this month out to tour. But, the, you know, there will always be random dates here and there, which is nice. It's great. And it's nice to be able to go and do gigs and concerts where... I know that I'm going to be singing songs from my album, so there's only like, you know, 12, 13, 14 songs to pick from, as opposed to going, oh God, what am I going to sing for this one, and what am I going to do in this concert, and it's always different, and learning lyrics and stuff. I know my set list now. So it's going back to Ghost, how did you get involved with the production? Um, as I said, Ghost was the one thing last year that I desperately wanted to do. I wanted to do more screen and TV acting and film acting um, after Wicked, unless Ghost came off, and um, my agent called me saying, oh, you've got an audition for it. So, I mean, I'd even, once I watched it, I'd even started teaching myself guitar because the character Sam plays the guitar in one of the first scenes. And, um, and so the first time that I played 
in front of anyone was at the audition. <laughs> I walked in, they were like, oh, a guitarist. And I was like, no, 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 no. Um, I can play on Jane Melody badly. That's about it. Um, and walked in and kind of met the, the UK creative team. Um, well, the, like the resident director and the people who were involved directly with the show in the morning. And then I got a call from my agent saying they want you to go back this afternoon. So I met the director, the producer, you know, kind of all the big people. And then um, that was on a Friday. And then on the Monday, I was to come back and read opposite two potential mollies. And one of which was Siobhan Dillon, who was now playing opposite. And, you know, it, it, it's so funny because when I went into the audition with her, I thought if I'm lucky enough to get this role, I really wanted to be with her because we just had instant chemistry. There was something that just clicked straight away and I was it just felt right. And then, and it's felt right ever since. We're really lucky to be playing opposite each other. I think we, well, I think I can speak on behalf of her as well, saying you know, that we both feel the same way. Um, and then, yeah, I got the job offer a few weeks later because there was a bit of a jigsaw that they had to f work out with when we were going to start and things. And then, yeah, I, was, I started rehearsals two weeks before I finished Wicked, so I was working, you know, like 14-hour days. <laughs> um, and then opened on Friday the 13th of January. Um, and, you know, not look back, it's been amazing. And would you take the opportunity to go to Broadway now that Ghost has been... Hell yeah. Over? I mean, New York is one place I really, really want to work. Um, I don't know whether it'll, there'll be the opportunity will come about to do it with Ghost um, because of, you know, equity and all that sort of stuff. But um, it, my, my agent and I, because I went over to New York a couple of years ago for the first time and I've been three times since. Um, and there's like a, an understanding between my agent and I that New York will happen at some point, somehow. But we're not pushing it, we're not rushing it really, because everything's going really well over here at the moment and I don't want to you know, burn my bridges and just swan off to the States and become a New Yorker. So um, yeah, it'll happen at some point hopefully. It is one of the best cities in the world though. Oh my it? God, the vibe though, the positive energy. I mean, I have a very positive slant on life and when you kind of go there, it's always like, yes sir, yes I can. And everything is always, you know, kind of, yes, I will help you. Whereas here it's a bit doom and gloom and look at the weather, oh, look, you know, kind of, Oh, you know, it's just a different way, and I'm, you know, that's very much a generalisation. I know that, you know, I'm kind of just it's being quite stereotypical there, but there was just a, an atmosphere at New in New York that I felt like, without sounding really like cheesy, but I felt like I belonged there, and I don't want to, you know, kind of move there for the rest of my life. But I'd like to move there for at least six months or a year to experience life as a New Yorker instead of feeling like a tourist. Yeah, I think I'd do the same. Actually, yeah, I'd like my. I was saying to a friend the other day. My dream is to have, I've got, I've got a flat here in London and it's got pictures of New York everywhere and I want to have an apartment in New York with pictures of London everywhere. <laughs> and then maybe like a villa in Spain and a yacht or something. <laughs> um, well, it's good to have dreams. Yeah. No, but that's, uh, you know, New York and London is where I would like to kind of be based between the two. So my last question for you, obviously you've got Ghost for the rest of the year, you've got the album out on Monday. Is there anything else that you've got coming up this year? Um, there's always new things that come up. I mean, I do a lot of Welsh language work for the TV channel S4C, um, and in November last year, I filmed a pilot um, that was aired, which was an audience with Mark Evans, um, which was great. It was like brilliant to be able to host it and present it, because I do quite a lot of presenting work. Um, and they've commissioned that to be a series whenever I'm available <laughs> so it's kind of you know as soon as Ghost finishes I think they'll kind of try and schedule that in which will probably be I don't know four six or eight eight episodes um, which will be really nice and you know nice to do something really different as well there's some other things you know a few auditions that are in the pipeline and who knows I mean the, the main thing is is that you know I would have done nearly a year on Ghost and it, it will be you know a fantastic year and after that on to the next and I don't put any pressure on myself people always say you know by the time you're 35 where do you see yourself and I'm like alive and happy hopefully like it's it's I don't you know there are things I'd love to do as I said I'd like to love to go to New York I'd love to originate a role I'd love to do this and do more you know this and that and but I don't say I have to do it by this point because I like to have I like to think that I have longevity to my career and then um, and you know a real versat versatility and and in that you just have to trust that the right things are going to come at the right time and I have done so far over the past 10 years since I moved since I moved from Wales and you know, fingers crossed it will keep going in the right direction. Well, best of luck with everything. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Cheers, thanks.